The Regista is a deep-lying playmaker, one of the two creative roles named by the theoreticians of Italian football. The other, the Trequatista, plays in the hole behind the strikers, but the Regista is an equally important position with a rich tactical history and evolution. The deep-lying playmaker can be found throughout the history of football tactics. In the old 2-3-5, the halfback line of three sometimes saw a player capable of raking passes out to the advancing wingers deployed as the centre-half. Charlie Roberts, who won the league with Manchester United in 1908 and 1911, was known for his ability to play the ball long into attacking positions from the middle of the 2-3-5. Vittorio Pozzo, who managed the Italian side from 1929 to 48, admired Roberts' creativity from a deeper position and used Luisito Monti in a similar way. Monti had a screening role in Pozzo's 2-3-2-3 as a centro mediano, tasked both with marking a deep-lying centre-forward, but also pivoting to turn defence into attack with his long passing. In the 1950s, sides such as Hungary started to deploy withdrawn forwards like Nandor Hidakuti, causing havoc to more static man-marking systems. In turn, these defensive arrangements responded by deploying screening midfielders to track the forward, robbing the centre-half of his creative role. There were exceptions. Luis Suarez, the Spain international who pulled the strings from deep for Helenio Herrera's Grande Inter in the 60s, played just in front of the back four. Suarez could carry the ball forwards but was often content to spread it wide or spray it forwards from a quarterback position in front of three central defenders. Nonetheless, the fashion in European football outside of Italy pushed creativity to the attacking midfield position ahead of ball winners and behind the forwards. The evolution of tactics into 4-2-4 and 4-4-2 tended to make the deeper lying playmaker redundant, for a while at least. Creativity came from driving box-to-box -box midfielders or wingers and overlapping fullbacks, or from the ten dropping off to find holes in front of the opposition back four, while, as Jonathan Wilson notes, the Brazilian side of 1970 used Gerson as a regista alongside the combative Clodoaldo, the Selecao's athleticism and fluidity compensated for the natural overloads that tend to occur when a central midfield axis employs a regista. The reintroduction of proper registers began when shifts to 3-5-2 or 4-1-3-2 created a screen of two defensive midfielders behind whom a regista could sit. Andrea Perlo, without doubt the modern game's greatest exponent of the art, played under Carlo Ancelotti at AC Milan in a variety of formations, most notably the 4-3-1-2 and the 4-3-2-1, as a sort of halfback in the second line of three. Gennaro Gattuso and Clarence Seydorf, or Massimo Ambrosini, who formed a narrow midfield that drew its width from overlapping fullbacks, they shielded Perlo, giving him time and space to pull the strings from deep. Having transferred to Juventus, Perlo continued to play in a deep, creative role with dynamic, intelligent midfielders such as Arturo Vidal, Claudio Marchisio, and Stefano Storaro, providing cover. In the voguish 4-1-2-3, which often uses inside forwards in support of a lone striker, the deep midfielder can either be a destructive player, shielding the back floor, or a regista. Xavi Alonso, who, like Perlo, has adapted to the regista role as he's got older, plays in this space for Bayern Munich. There is perhaps one true regista currently in English football, Michael Carrick. He has the poise and range of passing of good, deep playmakers, and Sir Alex Ferguson's purchase of Carrick signalled his desire to move to a 4-3-3, with Carrick central, or a 4-2-3-1, with the former Spurs man playing alongside a ball-winning midfielder. Perhaps his failure to reach the heights he was probably capable of was due to the frenzied pace of English football, which denied Carrick the space needed to excel. Or perhaps the English distrust of pure creativity, of unhurried elegance rather than hurly-burly scramble and wanting it more, meant that Carrick just played the game in the wrong country. Intelligence and tactical perception are the stock-in-trade of the regista, 
not pace and stamina. There has perhaps never been such an un-English role in football. Get it.